George Wellington. It was the London Lions uh, League and was the captain of the Shoreditch team. He was a left arm medium pace bowler and played between 1902 to 1913. The reason George Wellington found his way into the record books was not because he took uh, the most number of wickets or he had the best economy rate, but rather as captain, he had won 99 consecutive coin tosses. When you go home, give it a try to see how many you can get. I bet you'll be nowhere close to 99. But George did it. He won 99 out of 99. And as his 100th game was approaching, he had become a little bit of a celebrity in uh, his local community. The betting club started taking bets on uh, what were the chances that he would win his 100th game. So, let me do a little bit of mood check in this room. What do you guys think is going to happen on his 100th game? What are the chances that George wins? His 100 toss. Do you think that, you know, if someone wins 99 out of 99, he's probably figured out what the others don't know and he's definitely going to win his 100 toss? Or do you think nobody can be so lucky forever? He's going to lose this one. So, who votes A that he's going to definitely win? Who votes B that he has no chance? There are more, more cynics than optimists. <laughs> so, the statistically accurate answer is C. He has exactly 50% chance of winning his next off. <laughs> and what is interesting about this is even if George had lost all his 99 previous to coin tosses, he would still have 50% chance of winning his 100 coin toss. In life, not everything that you do is going to have even odds. Some things will be very hard, but I urge you to approach each challenge as if it were a new coin toss and start with a clean slate. Don't let past success get into your head and if life ever has you beat and it very often will, don't lose all hope. I'm a doctor so I've learned a lot of life lessons from medicine. Definitely and never are usually the wrong answer. And moreover, they also signal a closed mind. If I'm absolutely 100% convinced about something, am I really going to be open to new ideas? Let's keep our mind open to the possibility that the right answer may not even be a part of our initial consideration set. Ever so often the answer is not A or B, but turns out to be C. And speaking of open minds, I'm also mindful of all the students in this room today. And uh, you know, Shakespeare said a few hundred years back that the world is your oyster, but I think it's never been more true than it is today. Today the possibilities are endless. Uh, there's never been a better time to go out and make an impact. There's never been a better time to back yourself. And there's never been a better time to make a difference. Along the way, if you're attentive, life will present you with several opportunities. And I urge you to not let them pass and grab them when you see them. Today, right here, now, I am going to give you one such opportunity. The opportunity to play another game. So, I'm going to tell you about a movie and uh, I'll ask you some questions and depending on what the characters choose, we'll see how things pan out, right? Before we get started, let's get a little warmed up. Before the movie, you need to go to the cinema hall. So, we'll do a warm-up round. Let's uh, say there's a new cinema hall in your neighborhood and it's called um, Hot Flix. So uh, you're excited to go to Hot Flix. You are going to the movies with your entire family. You arrive there early and you still have some time. So you do the most obvious thing. You walk up to the counter and uh, say, could I have some popcorn please? So the gentleman looks up at you and says, certainly. What would you like? Small, medium or large? So small is for 210 rupees, medium is for 275 rupees, and large is for 290. Who's buying small for 210? Who's buying medium for 275? Who's buying large for 290? That's about 80% of you buying large for 290. <coughs> If it were possible, try to erase the last one minute from your mind and imagine that I gave you just two options. 
I'm not changing anything. I'm just giving you two options. Small is still 210 and large is 290. Does large seem so attractive anymore? The medium option is a decoy. It is placed in the menu by choice architects. The whole purpose of the cinema is not to sell media. Maybe if you ask for it, they might tell you it's out of stock. The whole purpose of medium is to make large seem more attractive. This, friends, is behavioral economics. It's the study of psychology and economics to understand and predict human decision making in real world situations. A lot of you would have heard of the Cambridge Analytica scandal a few years back. Cambridge Analytica, as the name suggests, is an analytics company headquartered in London. So Cambridge Analytica was accused of illegally obtaining data of Facebook users through a personality quiz, This Is My Digital Life. About 270,000 people took the quiz and through a loophole, they were able to access the data of not just the quiz takers, but their entire friend list. And eventually they managed to get the data of 87 million Facebook users. Now I'm no tech expert, so I don't really care how they did it or what uh, safeguards Facebook should have had in place in order to prevent this from happening. I care more about what would they do with this data. Cambridge Analytica says that by analyzing the likes and the kind of data that you consume on social media and influence your action. So it was alleged that uh, Cambridge Analytica was responsible for influencing the US presidential election in 2016 and even the uh, Brexit referendum to leave the U uh, EU. Now, rigging of an American presidential election is huge, right? How does my Facebook profile help anybody rig an election? So let's, let's do a simple uh, thought uh, experiment and an example. Let's say that I am trying to rig an election today in this room and I'm trying to rig an election in favor of uh, Mr. J. Mr. J has a pro-environment image and in this election, for simplicity's sake, there's just one issue of importance that is climate change. So some of you are loving that Mr. J has a pro-environment uh, image and others of you don't care too much about it. And through this personality profiling, I know exactly who thinks how. So now to, and to those of you who think that this is all nonsense and the economic impact of climate change action is catastrophic, I'm going to show you Mr. J at a conference with industry leaders, with capitalists. And I'm not going to do this once, I'm going to do this over and over again, day after day after day, till I successfully convince group A that J is indeed the environmental champion you thought he was. And I convince the others that he's perhaps not so bad for the economy and maybe I could work for him. So these are technology-based interventions. But even otherwise, social media is designed to be an echo chamber. You know how if you're interested in, say, football videos or dance or comedy, your, your social media feed is full of it? This is algorithmic. This is by design. And this is true even for issues of real importance. The social media is going to give you that information which reinforces your worldview and completely blank out the contrary uh, information. And this is very dangerous because today most of us consume our uh, news from social media. Uh, but historically, how did we consume our news? Newspaper. And what's the difference between the newspaper and the social media? The newspaper for the day is exactly the same for everybody. It has to contain the whole picture. Whether you like it, you agree with it, or you hate it. It has to contain everything. Now, each media house may have its own bias, but it's still the same for everybody. And what about social media? Each of our feeds is unique and different from everybody else's. And this feed, as I said, is designed to reinforce your views and only show you a select uh, world view. So now our minds, which are historically trained to think that a newspaper is a whole truth and social media has only one truth, so we make the logical deduction that this is the only truth. 
this is how people get polarized and minds get manipulated. Speaking of manipulations, uh, I must confess that no more either. I just wanted you not to overthink for the popcorn question. So, ladies and gentlemen, besides economics and social media and technology, I urge you to also be wary of self-styled experts in a suit. They may have their own agenda. <laughs> when we talk about the power of our minds, we must also be conscious of its limitation. Our minds are valuable. They have limited cognitive ability and they are prone to be manipulated. So all I want to say today is this, that while you are going out about life trying to win against all odds, don't let someone else decide how much popcorn you're going to have. Thank you.